For more on this, I'm joined by our political panel here in the Sky, or in the Sky News Centre, I should say, is Liberal MP David Coleman, and here in the studio with me, Labor MP Gabe Broadman. Thanks both for your time today, and to start with you, David Coleman, this judicial review, there's been some pretty serious allegations today of bribery. Uh, when the sentencing was handed down, that the judges at the time asked for uh, effectively $130,000 Australian to make sure there wouldn't be a death sentence but instead a, a jail term. Serious allegations. Uh, if these are not heeded, are there going to be serious consequences from the Australian government? Well, Tom, look, you're right. These are serious uh, allegations and, uh, and really do underscore uh, the importance uh, of, uh, of the, uh, the executions uh, not going ahead uh, to allow a, uh, a full uh, and uh, independent uh, examination of these, uh, of these allegations. Uh, obviously, uh, Mr Chan and uh, Mr Sukumaran are, are guilty of a serious offence for which they, uh, they should uh, uh, pay a price, but they should not pay uh, with their lives and uh, they certainly uh, should uh, be entitled to a, a full uh, and uh, detailed investigation of all of these uh, allegations. It would be uh, premature in the extreme uh, to uh, proceed uh, with the executions and certainly uh, that's what the message that uh, the Foreign Minister and the Prime Minister have been putting uh, to the Indonesian government and we would certainly hope that uh, they take heed of that message. Okay, Broadman, we know the Australian government's doing everything it can, both publicly behind the scenes, Labor supporting them. But so far, well, the PM can't seem to get a phone call from President Widodo. Should we be starting to think about repercussions? If, for example, in particular, if there's not even this judicial process that's being followed. Yeah, well, we are. We do uh, urge that uh, the, all legal avenues are exhausted before a final decision on this issue. As we know, there's the question of clemency uh, that's been brought by, uh, brought forward, as well as the uh, this this judicial commission inquiry. So we want all the legal avenues exhausted before any final decision. <coughs> In terms of the, uh, I know that everyone is working 24-7 on this issue. Where there is life, there is hope. And I know that uh, uh, embassy officials are working 24-7 on it. I know the government's working 24-7 on it. I know that Labor is working 24-7 on it in terms of trying to plea for mercy, uh, urge clemency. OK, well, I know it's a pretty sensitive issue diplomatically, so we might move on. And to reports over the weekend about the pharmaceutical benefits scheme and perhaps reform of it, Gabe Rodman, there was an example given. Uh, if you buy from the supermarket or a discount store 100 paracetamol tablets, it'll cost you, I think, $1.89, less than $2. Some pensioners instead getting a prescription from their doctor, $37 there, the taxpayer bulk bill, then paying nearly $9 for a 100 pack at a chemist. So we're talking about a cost of about $46 to the taxpayer for paracetamol, for apparently... Uh, uh, ibuprofen as well. Is that sustainable? Do we need to hack into this? Well, I've seen these reports and I've heard anecdotes of, of these sorts of instances happening. Uh, I, I, Labor is up for um, ensuring that the PBS is more sustainable and uh, as effective as it can be. But we, are, uh, we want to ensure that it doesn't hit or impact negatively in any way low and mid middle income earners, uh, those on a fixed income such as pensioners, the most vulnerable. So we, I mean, we introduced uh, a range of uh, measures to ensure the sustainability and improve the effectiveness of the PBS when we're in government. We're up for new ideas for that, right. but we, we want to ensure that it doesn't target the vulnerable. As when you the say it doesn't says. impact in any way, if someone did have to pay $1.89 for their own 100 pack, I mean that's an impact, but it's a pretty small one versus $46 taxpayer might have to pay. As I said, we're up um, for anything that is going to make the PBS more sustainable, more effective, that will bring uh, new drugs on, on onto the market, new, more modern drugs onto the market earlier. We're up for all of that. Uh, we just, um, yeah, we want okay. to ensure that it doesn't impact on the vulnerable. David Common, where do you sit on this? The other part of this report was chemists getting paid a dispensing fee, for example, anti-dandruff shampoo of, I think, $6.70 it was. Hmm. Well, look, I think, uh, Tom, uh, this is an area where you've got to constantly uh, review what's happening. Uh, the, the PBS is a, 
is a large and complex system uh, and if there are uh, anomalies or uh, perverse incentives uh, in the system it's, it's appro appropriate to address them because we've got to make sure that the, the PBS is sustainable uh, not just for this year or for the next five years but for the decades to come and there are as you know Tom blockbuster new drugs uh, being developed all the time in important areas like uh, cancer uh, you know diabetes many other areas and uh, they are very expensive those uh, uh, those new drugs and so we've got to make sure that the uh, the money within the PBS is being used sensibly um, so that we can focus it where it's uh, where it's really needed um, to have a situation are you worried, where David Coleman sorry to, sorry to jump yeah, in are you worried sure. though David Coleman about perhaps setting up a bit of a battle with the pharmacy guild there's this which would presumably leave them a bit worse off and the competition review as well that could let uh, supermarkets um, tap into a bit of their revenue as well oh look I think uh, that you know the pharmacy guild is a uh, uh, is a very uh, effective organisation in representing the interests of, of pharmacies and pharmacies uh, do a great job in many communities or in all communities including mine um, but uh, pharmacists uh, are aware that we need to make the PBS uh, work effectively and, uh, and sustainably and I, I wouldn't have thought that a, a process of, uh, of simply seeking to review apparent anomalies in the system would give anyone uh, too much concern uh, and, and in a sense uh, Tom it would be irresponsible not to do that uh, because if we've got tens of millions of dollars uh, being spent on on, uh, on uh, activities that, that really aren't sensible and really aren't a good use of uh, taxpayers money then it's incumbent on any sensible government uh, regardless of their politics to uh, to look at that carefully and uh, and make sure we're, we're setting up the PBS for the long run. Yeah, it promises to be interesting. It's a pretty powerful lobby group. I want to end, though, on same-sex marriage. Gabe Rodman, a, a push. I think she's been quoted before saying this, but Tanya Plibersek, putting this front and centre, let's have a binding vote for the Labor Party. Is this the right time for Labor to have a big debate about this? You're going pretty well politically and in the polls. The government's about to release a budget. Well, just for the record, I support marriage equality and I also support a conscience vote. And I do believe that the, the party uh, is, is a broad church, has a broad church of views on this issue. And I do believe that we should be able to accommodate that broad church of issue, uh, views on the issue. So I think that uh, I, I, I support a conscience vote on this issue. I think that uh, it, it is coming up for national conference. It should be around the confines of natural, nat uh, national conference. There's a number of issues that we're dealing with at the moment. And uh, that's what we should we should be focused on. David Coleman, your thoughts on this? I believe you're not a supporter of same-sex marriage. Do you still think and support the party, your party, having a vote on whether they get a conscience vote at some stage before the next election? Oh, well, look, I think, uh, Tom, obviously this uh, matter that Tanya Plibersex uh, uh, raised is a, uh, is a matter for the Labor Party. Uh, in terms of uh, the government's position, obviously, uh, as we said, going into the last election, we have a uh, uh, the existing uh, uh, position uh, in support of the uh, existing arrangements, um, and any uh, any change would be a, a matter for the uh, uh, for the party room, and uh, and that's where that sits uh, uh, at present. All right, perhaps a bit of a watch this space. David Coleman, Gabe Robin, thanks for your time today on the program. Thanks, Tom. Thank you.